Raindrops keep falling on me head. Apparently, this is what you do in winter time. You make boxes and boxes and on you go. So if you've decided to be a beekeeper, you will have gone online and you would have had a look at all the options that you have. Boxes of different sorts and all the rest of it. And if you've moved on from your flow hive because you actually need to expand and you've decided that you want to do something different, we thought we'd just give you a little explanation or a little, what do they call that? A demo video of how to make a bee box. We're going to make some wooden bee boxes. I've been a bit slack and bought a kit. Of course, if you're really motivated or you had a really motivated dad who had to have some cool machinery, you could get all this cut up, but I haven't got all of that all the time. So I've just bought the kit already and we're going to have a crack. One kit comes with the base made and one kit came with the base in pieces. So I thought we'd do the one in pieces because apparently that'll be more interesting. So here we go. Oh, there's so many options of this. It's ridiculous, really, honestly. Paint sort of dried on there. Right, okay. Oh. Oh. Bloke could give me a hand, but no, it's just gonna feel stiff. Oh my gosh, that's heavy. Hopefully I don't rip the microphone off me shirt. Arr, goodness me. Oh. Oh. Well, I'm officially worn out. That's one moved, I've only got a hundred or so to go, so. Anyway, unwrap our little present. It's come, come via the truck. Mine turned up on a truck, but you might have gone to the shop to get them. I wonder if they're the cricket killers. Remember that story? There was a bloke when there was a cricket plague on and he put an advert on in the paper and he said, guaranteed cricket killers. And people sent him 20 bucks and he sent them two bits of wood. As long as you can get the cricket in there, you're all good. Because I thought it was a bloody good idea. It wasn't telling any lies either. It's just a matter of trying to get the blooming cockroach in between the bits of wood. Could have had a little spike on there to make it easier. You could stick them on there first. Anyway, doesn't matter. These are the little bottom bits. And look at that. I've even wrapped it up in plastic and all. Oh, help. That'll try out your muscles lifting that out of there. And we have a lid. At least we don't have to make the lid. Oh, that's a bit scabby ass, isn't it? Look at that, got a little seam in there. Anyway, that's one thing you don't have to make. It comes already done, so that's good. See, I've got no rhythm. <laughs> it doesn't help. Chuck that over there for a minute. I like those air vents, they're pretty cool. Hmm. Ooh, look at that, you can even push me up. <laughs> wow. I reckon shit already. Yeah. Anyway, they're a cool air vent. Better than the plastic ones. You chuck the plastic ones in the Jolly Wax Dipper once upon a time when you need to fix things up and they just go and there's nothing left. Just a big ball of plastic. Holy shit. Were they my nails or their nails? No. Come on. Hey, they come with screws. Well, I'll be stuffed. Look at that. I went down the street and bought some screws, but they actually come with them. Well, bugger me. I wonder if those nails were in there. Were they nailed, Dave? Oh. Nah, they must have been my nails. Surely they just knocked off the shelf. Anyway. Do you reckon they look like proper outdoor? Surely they'd be outdoor screws. I bought these second hand boxes off this dude and he bloody nailed them together with chip rock screw, chip rock nails, which of course, if anybody knows anything about nails, they are actually indoor nails. They're not meant to get wet. So of course they all went rusty. And then when they get rusty, then they swell up and they split your bloody box. And it was a nightmare. So trying to pull all that apart, pfft, I've still got them. Some of them are sitting out here in the bloody back room because I can't be bothered. <laughs> so anyway, don't use indoor nails on your outdoor boxes. It's a very silly option. Of course, there's no directions. <laughs> God, cardboard collection, isn't it? Holy shit. Radio. <laughs> We'll put that up there for a minute. <laughs> That's not gonna happen, is it? Did you bring a knife? There's a knife. Oh, what was Crocodile done day? He'd say that, it's not a knife. It's only a bloody Stanley knife. Oh! And it would appear to me as if we've got two boxes, because we've got four, well, we've got four ends either way. And then we've got the baseboard, which looks like it's a few pieces of wood stuck together, which it would be. And I'm assuming, oh, this is our bottom board. 
These are our pieces to lift our box off the bottom. And I'm assuming that's the little entrance. Look at that, that's kind of groovy. That looks like it's the little entrance bit. So that's going to sit there. That bit's going to go there. And you're going to have two bits without a... Whatever that's called. What's that called? A dub. A thing? Cut out? No? I don't even know. Someone Google that shit quick. <laughs> anyway, so you got to make sure you got ever this nice and square. I think what I'm going to do though, I'm going to get a little bit of pink primer and I'm just going to do it around the lip. I don't like to paint the inside of the box completely, but I just like to seal, especially these ends. So you can see in there, if he zooms in on it, you can see all the porous air opening where they've cut the end of the wood. When it's out in the weather, the water's going to run in there, soak that up, swell that up, and cause all sorts of issues. So I suggest that you seal it off, but you don't have to, but I like to. I figure this is hopefully a 10 to 20 year project that these boxes might last, but probably not. But anyway, I can but dream. So I got a little bit of pink primer. This is hard to find the old fashioned pink primer, by the way. Well, maybe it's just hard to find in Loxton, but anyway. <laughs> They don't sell it at Bunnings, I can tell you that for free. There you go. The old school pink primer, she soaks into the wood, seals it off a bit. But I don't, like I said, I don't like to paint the actual hole inside of the box. I just like to seal where it's not going to be able to be painted on. So I'm just gonna do this just because I can. And I think I should. But you do what you like, of course, because it's gonna be your box and it's gonna be your shed and you can do whatever you wish to a point when it comes to that part. There's a few things you have to follow the rules, of course. It's a little bit like cooking, you know? You're not likely to put coriander in your carrot cake, but, you know, because it's probably not gonna work. But it's all relative to how long you think it's gonna last. Or you could be like the bloke who I sold some bees to the other day, and he's gonna put his bee box inside a shed anyway, so I don't suppose it really matter. He's actually built a shed to put the box in. Oh, I don't think it's ever going to get wet. So I thought that was ambitious. See, there's always, there's always something different that you didn't think of. I'm not sure as if you were a migratory beekeeper how you get on building a shed for every bee box, but still. Any clue as to what we're going to do? Are we going to screw that to this baseboard or are we going to nail it? What do you reckon? Anybody out there have a good idea? I reckon I'm going to just nail it because this bit. I'm going to screw the legs on. I'm just going to nail this bit, I think. Right, so that should seal that up nicely. Beautiful. Of course, this is probably going to be an awkward board for traveling, isn't it? Because it's not actually, it's got a lip there, so. But that'll be a nice landing board. I wonder how many bloody screws did they send? That would be a packet. Should we actually count how many screws we actually got and then we'd know whether they... I mean, no, those screws are definitely not meant for that. Staple-y things, but I don't know whether I want to use them or whether I want to just use nails. We'll see. We'll get them out of this packet and see if they're long enough because I could only get 38s. That's if I can even get the bloody packet open. So it might be long enough, I don't know, we'll have a look. <laughs> that one's definitely not gonna be any good, is it? Oh, straight. Try not to drop too much stuff. So we'll go the other way, won't we? We'll come up from underneath there. If we came up underneath, it'd be perfect. Oh no, we can go that way. They're still not gonna come out. We'll put one, we'll put some in and see what happens. I say we'll get these nails out of here that look like they're on drugs. They're pretty serious. I wonder if they go over there or over in there. I hope I brought the right staples. Yeah, cool. Huh. Having myself a little fit. <laughs> okay, now I would suggest you just make sure that you get your backboard nice and square. That's a good place to start. At least as square as you can. Easiest thing that I've found is with my poor blind old eyes, if you just rub your finger up and down, you can feel whether you've got it perfectly flush or not. Of course, you've got to make sure you've got the other sides all good too. So you've got it straight at the back. This bit's along here. I suppose you could put it in a jig if you wanted to get really motivated, but still, let's not get too carried away. I'm assuming you haven't got a jig if you're watching along at home, so, or a nail gun. If you haven't happened to have a nail gun, you can just use your hammer. Yo, now, gonna go the side bit. Same story, you gotta make sure you've got everything reasonably straight, or at least as straight as you can get it, because you don't want too many lumps sticking out the side. Obviously, everywhere where water can weep in, it's just gonna shorten the life of your box. So, try to keep it a bit neat. 
suppose if you were really excited, you could go from underneath, but I don't know how you actually keep it all square then. <laughs> Now, just as an important little footnote, don't bloody nail the thing where the opening is. Otherwise, you'll have all sorts of excitement. So you just want to nail the edges of this one. Very good. It's pretty good to me. It's not perfectly perfect because it's not quite cut perfect, but that's all right. It's probably cut a lot more perfect than if I'd done it. Here's another trick for young players. I like to try and waterproof this and timber a little bit being that it's just pine untreated because obviously you can't have bloomin kira soap friggin trimber board that the bees are going to be living in because that's not good for them but what i have discovered is this alternative treatment for outdoor wood and i seem to find this works really good so so just another thing to buy but anyway this stuff here seems to work fairly good it says the safe alternative to kira soap no i kira soap how the hell do you pronounce that stuff Anyway, treated pine. I don't even know how you pronounce that word. How good are you? C-R-E-O soaked. All I know is it's green posts. Anyway, it's bad shit. This stuff here is apparently the alternative. And I've used this a bit and it's really quite good. So, so if you're going to be like me and you're going to have this pine wood sitting out in a field somewhere, this is a good option. If you're going to make yourself a little stand, yeah, well, probably you don't have to get that excited. But my boys, my boxes are going to be sitting out in the weather a bit. So this is my plan. Put a bit of this stuff on there. Right, so I'm just going to put my apron on because this is horrible muck. <laughs> so just as a little side warning, this stuff here is, does not do your paintbrushes any good. So don't be rushing out and buying the most expensive paintbrush for this part of the job. It's not a good option because it does destroy a few paintbrushes. So especially when you do a few hundred of them, like probably if you're going to do one or two, it doesn't really matter. But we'll give it a little stir. See if I can find a paintbrush, that'll be the next thing. This poor unfortunate paintbrush, I've trimmed the edges off because she's, she's blooming had, last time I cleaned it, she was like this flayed out. So I thought, got me scissors and I've just chopped some of the brushes off. So anyway, don't use your best paintbrush. Of course, if your base comes pre-made, you can just paint this around and, you know, paint it around the seams. But I just thought, since this isn't even put together yet, it'll be advantageous, we'll get this stuff actually underneath underneath the legs, because these will be the legs in a minute. We'll paint the bottom of that for when we stick it there. Depending on how we stick it there, but we'll get to that in a minute. We're probably gonna have to measure that, aren't we? Anyway, first things first, we're gonna paint the base of this, because I reckon you wanna try and keep this stuff a little bit alive. It's lovely muck. I don't really even know what's in it, but. I have read, you know, you can make up a mixture of copper and diesel and or sump oil so for those at home this is not sump oil this is actually a product out of the shop you can use a mixture of sump oil and diesel that will do sort of a similar project similar idea any old farmers used to use the old sump oil up on their posts that they'd stick in the ground so but anyway i'm just being a bit environmentally friendly I'll show you. there we go that's looking pretty good with that soak in, I don't know, do we want to put some along that edge? Some along, I think we'll paint that edge with some other stuff. And then we're just going to, these are the bottom legs. Good question, are we going to go that way or that way? There's been some debate here. I reckon we're going to go for the fatter edge. So I reckon the further off the ground, the better. I'll put them that way and so we'll paint that edge. Try not to get this shit on your hands because it's shit, it's hard muck to get off. But it does eventually fall off because, I mean, you know, Good thing about us humans, we just grow more skin anyway. I don't, it's meant to be non-toxic, so you should be right. One good thing about it is it dries pretty quick. Yeah, where are we gonna go? We put them there, and we're gonna want to turn this over and sit them in the right spot. So we'll get rid of these bits. I think I'm gonna screw them there. I'm just wondering how long that is. You could obviously nail these to the bottom, but I'm gonna put a screw in them because I reckon they're a bit stronger then. Plus I've got some screws. It's them sent me a heap of screws, which is kind of groovy. So I'm going to screw the legs. Well, I guess they're legs or the base plates. <laughs> I'm going to stick them on the bottom. Screw them there because that'll be a bit stronger than nailing. You could nail them if you're slack. But what I would suggest you do is find a ruler. Just wait there. I'll go and find a ruler. <laughs> Maybe. Or something that 
A uniform measuring stick of some description. No, that wouldn't be easy to find, would it? Hmm. Staying true to borrowing things that aren't technically mine. This is my mum's texter that's been in my ute for a while. At least that'll still work, hopefully. But I don't know where the bloody hell I did with my ruler. <sighs> ah, fuck it. No, I suppose if this is an instructional video, I better go and get a ruler, better not. I was just going to be slack and I thought, well, if I use that pen, it'd be uniformed, wouldn't it? Be there and there, but... You know what, wherever I put these jolly things, it's going to be debatable as to whether I've got them in the right spot for when I make my other pallets to put these on. I have no choice for the other. Actually, I've got a better idea. What we'll do, if we just actually drill some holes through here and through there, and then just line them up with that, I reckon that'd be tickety-boo. That will save us a whole lot of worry about finding measuring sticks and all sorts of shit. Rightio. So anyway, so we'll get organised and we'll drill a little pilot hole through here. I reckon about there looks good. A couple along here as well, so we got... Only three screws ought to be shitloads, shouldn't it? It'll be plenty for this project anyway. Sit that there, so we line that up. That should be good. These are only little daggy ass bits of wood, but anyway, it won't really matter. Ew, yuck. Don't touch the end, it's yucky. Try to make sure you get it sort of square, because it just looks cool. Right, so we'll just stick the screw in here. So these are little self countersinking screws so you don't have to countersink your hole. So you get a nice flat bottom, which I reckon is a bit better for the ladies. You don't want to have your drill going too hard, otherwise you'll bloody cut all the way down through your board. Don't get carried away. I think that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, if you... More of a thrill seeker, which I was, have been in my past life. You don't have to drill a pilot hole, you can just go whack them straight in there, but it really is quite the bum if you actually split your wood. So I figure to drill a little pilot hole is actually a good idea. That would surprise you, wouldn't it? Me doing something a bit more professional. But you see what happens when you get carried away, you see the soft bit and it just went, woo! <laughs> It's not meant to do that, but anyway, very good. Right, so we're gonna put a little bit more black muck on these bottom legs and on that back edge. And then we'll sit it out somewhere to dry off a bit. Hopefully this muck will work. Mm -hmm. I like the way it soaks into the wood like, because like, paint will just sit on the top and doesn't really soak in properly, whereas this stuff seems to just soak right into it. Oh, I reckon it's good shit, but I don't know. You can always make up your own mind out there. In the land of internet, there's probably plenty of other things. I think I did find some other products that this one seemed to be the one that worked. Then we're going to put that over to dry. Oh, I reckon that looks pretty cool. We'll paint this top bit with some other paint and then we'll be done. Look at that, eh? So that's the bases put together. Now we're going to have to make some supers or some, actually this is going to be the brood box. And that's the box that the bees have got to live in on top of that base that we just made. So... That'll, we've got some dovetail ones, because you get all sorts of different ones. You get some that have the dovetails, some that just have a re rebate. These are the ones that I've decided to go with because they're easy to square up. Either way you want to go, you're all up to you. I like to do the same sort of thing with these, just a bit of pink, pink primer in these joins, because I notice when you get an old box that's been out in the weather for several years, eventually this sort of starts to seep in here and they, you know, even though your paint is all good, but the only thing sealing it is that one little tiny seam. So if you pink prime that bit before you slip them together, I found that it actually at least seals off those bits in here that you can't get to with your paintbrush and just gives you a little bit less likelihood of this all soaking up with water and going pear-shaped. Of course, it all just adds a little bit longer to the project, but mind you, if you're lucky and you don't have to make a box every 10 years, so if it lasts for 10 years, it's worth the extra exercise, isn't it? Cool. So just get this in here and try to get these little seams covered up. Because obviously, like I said, when you're going to be painting, you're not going to be able to get to these bits. So if you do it before you put it together, 
And of course you can do that, it's the same thing when you've got the um, rebated box, you just paint along that seam that's going to be covered up. I reckon it gives you a little bit longer life. Yeah, I'm dripping paint on everything, let's not do that. Not that it really matters, but you don't really want this crap inside your box. Well, there is plenty of people out there that paint the inside and the outside of their boxes. Me, I think the whole purpose of having a wooden box is so it can breathe a little bit. Maybe sort of soak up some of the girl's atmosphere. That's a debatable point too. I think the idea of painting the inside of the box is really for the wax moths to slow them down so they can't actually chew into the wood quite as easily. <laughs> All down to how much time you've got, I suppose, isn't it? It's a long drawn out state of affairs at the best of times, making boxes. Try to remember where you put your handle. It's a bit more complicated when you haven't actually got a handle piece. But these girls have got a box everywhere. And then of course you want to make sure that you paint the right one. And that's going to be the bit that slides in there. This is actually, you can see it better. You see how this has got the open, open pores of the wood? This is what I'm trying to seal off. Some people like to glue them together as well with a bit of PVA glue. And I'm, I'm tipping that that would do something similar to seal the wood anyway. But this is my project, so I'm going to do it this way. This is what I've found the best. It makes it nice and slippery. A bit slippery dip. <laughs> right, yo. I wonder what's in this horrible pink primer stuff. Probably something deadly. I had an old pergola at our old house and I did it with pink primer and a couple of coats of paint. And the paint's still stuck there. That must be 20 years ago. It's just starting to peel now, so it's good stuff, this. But you don't see it as much as you used to. You get that all-in-one primer stuff nowadays, but this is a little bit old school, this stuff. Hell, I hope I got that the right way up. You little brick brute. Oh, lucky. Oh, if you've got a rubber mallet, it's a much better idea, but I couldn't find one, so we're going to hit it with this instead. If you're being nasty with your hammer, though, don't get carried away, because you'll... Let one of these off and then you'll be really shitted off with yourself. Especially if you've only got one. So just be, if you're not using a rubber mallet, just be a little bit gentle with your sledgehammer. Less is more, I think they say. Something like that. In that situation anyway. Even though that's not the truth in every situation, is it? Oh, golly gosh. Being that I'm normally a bit of a ruffian, you can imagine that this is actually... Something that I've decided is actually a good idea because it does add a little bit more excitement to this job. So I'm not one to just do stuff just to amuse myself or just to fill up my day. Woodworking, eh? I wonder if my woodwork teacher would believe me if I was here told him I ended up doing this for a career box painting. He wouldn't even be like, <laughs> he would not be impressed. The poor bloke <laughs> told me once in my class, that PVA glue is not actually what you use to fix your mistakes. <laughs> it's actually just meant to hold things together. It worked for me. But I tell you, that's the thing with wood. It's very unforgiving. You have to get everything really accurate. Like if we were making metal boxes where we could just get the MIG welder and go and just fill the bloody hole up with crap, <laughs> it wouldn't matter. It's a bit hard to get some wood putty in these holes, isn't it? You could probably just dip the bloody end in the pot of paint if you really wanted to be slack, couldn't you? I wonder if you had a big lemon flat disc and you could just get that and dip it straight in might be a bit wasteful <laughs> anyway that's for another video <laughs> how to speed the process up right it's me bonging banging machine is that a bit of a tap just don't get carried away because the dovetails do not like to be beaten too harshly I think perhaps we should have got a little bit different bit of cardboard from when we did the bases so we wouldn't get this black muck on there. Anyway, not to worry, you can't have everything. So now we're just going to screw it together. Make sure, the one, that's the one thing I love about these dovetails is that you're pretty sure that you're going to get it reasonably square, but you want to have a bit of a look, but much better than the, when you've just got the recess boxes, holding it to keep them square is a bit of entertainment. The fun part is you get to this point and you flip it over and you find out you've got the silly thing the wrong way around. Then you're out and that's not good. But luckily, we're not in that situation. So here we go. With this end ones, because it's right on that top edge, 
which is a quite a narrow little piece. And if you went straight down, you're going to be right on the edge of the bit of wood. So I like to go in on a bit of an angle so as it's actually screwing in here a bit. So as you don't, it just gives you a bit more wood to grip to. And then depending on how many of these blooming things you've got to go as to how many days you spend in your shed making them. So, <sighs> Think of me when you're lounging back in your lounge chair, eating on your honey and toast. The effort I've gone to to make it happen for you. of me when you're relaxing stuck out here in the shed making boxes so there's our base put together and of course you've got your brood box that's going to go on here sit there like that and obviously you have a strap to hold it all together and then you get your lid pa -da -pa -da! shave and a haircut honey coming your way <sighs> only a couple hundred to go <laughs> god hopefully you haven't actually got a couple of hundred to make but if you're wondering how to make a bee box, well, there you have it. Obviously, you've got to put some frames in here, but that might be another episode. I don't know. I think John's volunteering to help me paint them, but I don't think so. But anyway, oh, here we go. You've got to start somewhere. You've got to put them together. And then you've got to slap some paint on them. And then you've got to slap some bees in them. And then you can slap some honey on your toast. Oh, shit, don't land in there. 